I have the opportunity to introduce a gentleman that all of you know, okay? This particular individual, he, he, he stole the stage with, with something that you'll see Mr. Thomas doing every single day now, backbone and posture, right? And on top of that, I just want you to know that prior to getting involved with ACN, he's worked as a counselor, he's, he's married, uh, he, and his grandbaby just turned seven years old. And I'm gonna tell you something, um, and, and he knows this, having uh, grandkids is the blessing for not killing your kids. Can we agree, Mr. Sam Foster? And so he, he's, he's a phenomenal parent. He brings wisdom uh, to the calls. And on top of that, he has some incredible work ethic. Someone who decided to humble himself, get uncomfortable, and sleep on the floor until he got it done. He pushed out into the malls uh, during, during a time where most people were staying indoors, and he decided to go out and meet new people, peaked people left and right in the malls, and he had lots of those people come into his organization and start building in his business. So he's here to help us to show how to launch our businesses in the right way. So without any further ado, I want to introduce to the call, Mr. Sam Foster. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for those wonderful, wonderful, kind words. Um, Mr. Julian Lewis, you've always been uh, such a professional guy and a servant leader in your own right. Want to give it back to you. Want to also give it back to Mr. Al Thomas in his absence. Thank him for his platform, as always. And also for that uh, Lone Ranger we love to call Jabri Clemens, who makes all of us look fantastic, who actually uh, puts this thing together behind the scenes and always is on point. I'd like to thank you all, all the leaders on the call, both foreign and domestic. I'm gonna go ahead and get right into the call because I'm very excited. So uh, with that said, I'm gonna get started today, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, <clears throat> had an interesting week this week and um, really was kind of tossing between two and three things that I was gonna talk about on the call. And uh, it, it just hit me. It hit me um, yesterday evening, late yesterday evening, I kind of uh, switched directions. I like to be moved by the spirit. So. Um, if you're taking notes, I want you guys to write this down. If you're taking notes, I'm pregnant and my water just broke. Yeah, 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 that's right, that's right, that's right, exactly, exactly what I said. I'm pregnant and my water just broke. But but how can you how can you be pregnant and be a male? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it, I got it, I got it. You don't have to be pregnant physically to be pregnant prospectively. Write that down. You don't have to be pregnant physically to be pregnant prospectively. I'm gonna put everything into perspective because I do believe that a lot of people that are on this call, and I talked last week about back to the future and being focused. And I do believe a lot of people that are on this call in the last six weeks, in the last uh, approximately six weeks that we have left in this year, I want people to remind themselves that they can become pregnant, okay? Pregnant with the possibilities of what their business can be and pregnant with the aspect of not only being consistent, but being motivated and elevated through the things that they do on a continual basis, okay? We're gonna get started. And when I say this to you, ladies and gentlemen, I'm saying this in the perspective of love and um, admiration for everyone on this call because the majority of the people on this call, not only do I consider you guys leaders, but I consider you guys are consistent individuals because you pretty much come on this call all the time. First of all, I wanna hit on, on an uh, aspect that I personally like to uh, put on the table. I'm not going to do what every everybody else is doing because I don't want what everybody else has. I'm going to repeat that. I'm not going to do what everybody else is doing because I don't want what everybody else has. And I've decided to put that in the forefront of my mind because I've started to look at this past year and I've started to understand 
that everybody that I can think of on a consistent basis has bought into the aspect of having the nine to five mentality. That means a lot of people are being comfortable with going to work. We do have a few people that decided to jump ship for lack of a better word in August, about 4 million, if I'm not mistaken, that decided they wanted to do something different with their lives. And I give them thumbs up for that. And I say that it's possible to turn the curve. What do you mean by that, Sam? Well, I mean by that, I mean this. I got a friend of mine, just to give you guys a backdrop and a story. I got a friend of mine that I've been knowing for the last bit, almost 20 years. He's a um, businessman, had a business, and this just happened about two months ago, had a business that, that was thriving. And uh, when I say thriving, his business was thriving. Um, he catered to some of the uh, who's who in the entertainment industry. Um, he was doing just phenomenal things. Business was, was booming. And all of a sudden, in the last two months, his business dropped about 80%. He lost about 80% of his clientele. Why are you saying that? What I'm saying that because one of the things that he didn't have, ladies and gentlemen, was residual income. Yeah, he, he, he got pregnant with an idea, but it didn't have residual income attached to it. And I started to think about it. This is one of my, my good friends. Had all these contracts, had all this clientele, was bringing in, I mean, well over six figures. And in less than two months, he lost 80% of his clientele. Now, I'm not saying that to shame him. I'm not saying that to uh, not be a friend, but I'm saying that as a warning shot to everybody that's on this call. Why? Because you guys have the opportunity to make residual based income on a consistent basis. And oftentimes we get stuck and we take it for granted. But we shouldn't take it for granted because the way that the world is going today, ladies and gentlemen, everybody's looking for something. And to be honest, we have what everybody's looking for. We just have to have the backbone and posture to remind ourselves that we have what people are looking for. Just to give you an example, and I've said this to myself many a time. I don't want to get caught trading time for dollars because they'll always tip you with a paycheck. I'm going to repeat that. Don't get caught trading time for dollars because if you do, you'll always get tipped with a paycheck. Okay? Give you guys another story. And I thought about this for a little while and I said, well, does this fit? And it absolutely does. You take immigrants that come to this country. Many a times, and no disrespect to immigrants, I think they've done a wonderful job uh, in this country. I think they've added, uh, I mean, mounds of um, respect and, 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 and admiration to the country. Matter of fact, many would agree that they helped, of course, build this country. But with that said, I want you to understand the mind state of many immigrants. The mind state of many immigrants, when they come to this country, just to be totally honest with you, they come to this country and they come home. They come to this country with, country with a passion that is really unmatched by many people that's already been in this country. What do you mean, Sam? I'll give you an example. You got immigrants that come to this country. They can't speak English. Eight or 10 of them are getting a one bedroom apartment. Nobody try to dress up. Nobody trying to outdo each other. Everybody comes on the same page. And when they come to this country, ladies and gentlemen, they don't try to buy a bunch of furniture. They go buy a rusty van with the window busted out with plastic on the side. And they usually trust to do day labor. They all put their money together. They all pool in the, pool in the same area. In the same place that they got the apartment, give them about a year. 
a lot of many times, ladies and gentlemen, they'll end up owning the apartment complex that they was written out. Well, I don't know if you're telling the truth, Sam. I, I, I try this on for size. If you ride by most hotels, you'll see where it says under new management. In about a year, year and a half, you'll see another sign say under new, new management. And that's because those individuals have bought that complex. And now they're the owners. And most of them can't speak English. And if you want to translate with them, nine times out of 10, they have to get their kids to translate because they still can't speak English. Well, I don't know if you're telling the truth. I did a conference last week, about three, it was about two, three day conference. The cleaning crew, about 90% of them couldn't speak English. And I was trying to ask them something. And because of the power of technology of a cell phone, I honestly walked up to one of the guys because I was trying to ask him something about the napkins in the bathroom. He couldn't speak a lick of English. He said, ho, 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 threw his finger up. He got on his cell phone. He made a phone call and I'm standing there, I'm perplexed. I'm like, why am I standing here and why is he making this phone call? He made the phone call and all of a sudden another person jumped on the call and said, yes, can I help you? And it dawned on me. I said, wow, this guy can't speak English, but he understands he needs the help. So what he did was he conveniently got on the phone and got with another person that spoke English in order to get my question answered. In other words, there's more than one way to skin a cat. And if a person that can't speak a lick of English can come to this country and make money, what's our excuse? Just a thought, ladies and gentlemen, what is our excuse? That just gives you a heads up. Then my next point I want to make is, what's the difference between trading time for dollars and making residual income? Now, I want you guys to think about that for a second. What's the difference between trading time for dollars and making residual income? Okay, first of all, if you're making time for dollars, nine times out of 10, you're making money on the clock. But if you're making money on the clock, when you get off the clock, your money stops. Oh, let me repeat that again. If you trade time for dollars and you're making money on the clock, but then when you stop getting on the clock, your money stops. Not true with residual income. Because if you're making money with residual income, the premise of that is, is that your money continues to grow month after month after year, after year, and growing. And not only that, ladies and gentlemen, but the way ACN is set up, we do what we call essential services. So if you're doing essential services and you're making residual-based income, well, you're making money in a position to where if you make that connection and you lock in on what we're doing in ACN, your money is not going to only continue to flow, but it's going to continue to grow because it's already tied into essential service. Okay, so some, of you, some of you ladies and gentlemen may be thinking, okay, I, I, I don't know if I get it. Well, let me give you an example. I went to Walmart the other day just to give you an example. And I know some on the call saying, well, it's been tough for me. It's been a tough year. I don't know but you're pregnant. Remember, you're pregnant. And I want you guys to realize something while you're pregnant. I want you to carry this baby full term. We're not going to abort the baby. We're going to carry it full term. Why? Because there's a lesson in carrying this baby full term. In other words, if you carry the baby full term, you're going to find out a lot about yourself, aka your body. You're going to have to find, you're going to find a lot about your mind, aka your strength level. You're going to find out about your resistance level. What can you take? What can you take? What can your body take in this time of carrying this baby full term? Well, let, let, let me bear something with you, ladies and gentlemen. 
if you're an ACN and you've been in ACN a while, we've always been taught that um, you put yourself in a position to be consistent. And the way that you do that is that you continue to do the same thing over and over and over and over again, especially if it works. Why? Because it'll work if you work it. Here's the additive, work. It's going to take work. Work and consistency merging together. Went to Walmart the other day and I'm in Walmart and I'm talking to a young lady and uh, lady told me she was an event planner. And uh, didn't say much back to her, just kind of feeling around a little bit, let her talk. After she got through talking, I let her talk maybe about 30 seconds to a minute. You don't need that much for them to talk. So once the young lady talked, I found out something. I said, she's no different than anybody else. Because so most of the time people try to hype themselves up. They try to say they're making this money, they're doing this, they're doing that, they're really not. And it finally hit me. I said, well, I know she have, has a place to live and I know she has to pay these services. So she started asking me, what do you do? What is it? What is it? So she was trying to try my hand. And I said, I'll give you a call. Let me get your number. Gave her a call. First, she didn't answer the call. For, for all you people on the call that said, well, people ditch me and this and all oh, that's part of the plan. And that's part of it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You're pregnant. Don't even worry about it. Okay, she tried to ditch me. So as she tried to ditch me, I sent her the um, Zoom information, okay? Finally got a call back from her around 7.59. And for you old schoolers out there with ACN, you know that's just terrible timing right there. But I found out something. Most people that call you that late, they're not trying to get on the call anyway. It's just trying to play you out. But I got it. So my solution to that, ladies and gentlemen, when you're pregnant with this thing, is that they'll usually call you back and mine did the same, call me back and say it, well, I can't get on the call. Um, uh, uh, the phone keeps ringing. Well, that, most of the time, in my opinion, that's an excuse. So what I did was I sent her the Tony, Tony Cooper's information along with my personal website. Why? Because that's being a professional. That's not taking uh, excuses for granted. That's being a professional. That's keeping the baby alive. That's getting ready to be birthed. You have to understand some ladies and gentlemen, most of the time, people are going to try to fake you out when it comes to this business, when it comes to this industry. What do you mean, Sam? Okay, give you another example. Let's try the business owner. Most business owners should be head over heels for ACN. They should love it. Why? First of all, it's essential services and you get paid off of yourself. Instead of paying other people for services that you can pay yourself for, it should be a slam dunk. Well, what makes the average business owner not do ACN? I found some out, ladies and gentlemen. The average business owner is nothing but a glorified worker. Yeah, I'm going to say it again. A glorified worker. He or she has still not put in perspective that they own their business. All they're doing a lot of times is holding a title. Be careful, ladies and gentlemen, that you don't hold a title. It's been my experience that most of the time when you hold a big title, you're broke. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. If you hold a big title, most of the time, if it doesn't have residual income in it, you're broke. But why do you say that? Once again, going back to my friend, greater part of 10 years now, six-figure income earner. 80% of his business drops in less than two months. 80%. Now let that sink in, ladies and gentlemen. That means you got to downsize your staff. That means you probably have to downsize your whole operation in life. Because if you lose 80% of your business, it is not residual income based. Wait a minute. You have to change something. 
and you may have to change where you live. Your zip code may change. I don't know if you, you take an 80% hit and don't have to change your zip code. But remember, with residual income, ladies and gentlemen, we don't have to do that because if that same person was connected to ACN, chances are he would have been receiving residual based income not only off of other people, but off of himself because he would have put his business under the residual income cap. Think about that. When you guys are talking to these business owners, they have to understand that. And sometimes it, it, it may take you, you know, seeing this in perspective for a while to give that information to these individuals. Because I know sometimes we don't, we don't, we don't maintain that backbone we should when we're talking to these individuals. A lot, a, a lot of people don't tell me no. They just don't answer their phone. <laughs> Let me repeat that. These days, a lot of people don't tell me no. They just don't answer their phone anymore because they understand when I present this information to them that I'm giving them the facts. When you present this information, ladies and gentlemen, if you present the comp plan to them, that comp plan speaks for itself. Why? It pays out. Let me repeat that. The comp plan speaks for itself because it pays out. We have to understand that. See, we have a problem sometimes with giving people the facts. You might not like me for giving you the facts, but it is what it is. You could, you could say you're going to take me to court. You could say we're being shady. We could, you could say it's a scam. But ladies and gentlemen, until that complaint does not pay out, it becomes a fact. That's why documentation is always going to be better than conversation. Give them the facts. And then you can sit back on the facts. Why? Because you're giving it to them. But sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, we don't even do that. If you don't do anything, when you meet somebody, if you don't do anything, if you're giving birth to your dream, if you don't do anything, give them the facts. Give them the compensation plan. Why? Because we're going to have to pay that out legally. And continue to do it day to day with the numbers. It'll add up. It's going to add up. But I, I do believe that we stop doing it in the numbers. It's a numbers game. You guys are going to have to realize to keep doing it in the numbers. One or two people, doesn't matter. Those same one or two people eventually call you back. And like they always do me, they say, you're still doing that thing? Well, I get bold sometimes and say, you're still working? Yeah, let me repeat myself. They ask me if I'm still doing that thing. Sometimes I'll tell them, are you still working? Because at some point, they trading time for dollars, and I'm making residual-based income. That's how we have to look at this business, ladies and gentlemen. Point I'm trying to make, and I'll be wrapping up. Don't give me nothing that doesn't have residual income attached to it with an essential service perspective. Why? It's not going to last. Don't give me anything that does not have a residual income perspective to it because it's not going to last. But what does he mean by that? Okay, let's take the doctor, for instance. Well, most doctors, to be honest with you, they make pretty good. But why does the doctor get attracted to ACN? Well, I'll give you a big one. Look at the situation that we had a year and a half ago. Where I work at, doctors were, were, were shaking in their boots. Why? They didn't want to see a client. But legally, they were bound by their ethics to see clients and things of that nature and didn't know if they was going to get attached to the situation or anything like that. But the doctors and the nurses, they had to do it but they were tied to a job. Most of them didn't have residual-based income and the end result on a negative scale, a lot of them quit. They were overworked, they were drained. And if you guys saw those pictures that came on TV, oh man, they, they, they were the ones that were stacking bodies in these 18 wheelers and they were drained. And a lot of them caught the COVID. And if they survived, a lot of them threw in the towel. But what if they had residual income? 
What if they had that residual income that could never stop because everybody has to go to a residence and business owner have to have a business and these essential services have to get paid? So whether you're a doctor, whether you're a lawyer, whether you're a social worker, everybody has to pay for these services. So in the back of your mind, I want you to think, well, you have the cure for a situation that most people don't have. And because you're on this call, you have to ask yourself, ladies and gentlemen, sit down and really think about ACN for a second. Sit down and really think about how you're carrying this baby. Sit down and really think about, am I, am I giving myself nourishment so I can deliver this baby? Am I giving myself all the tools, the equipment that I need? Some people can say they're not. This is not to knock anybody on the call, but this is a call to action to say, wait a minute, let's redirect our energy a little bit. Let's be a little bit more consistent. Since I know I got what everybody needs and everybody has to have, let me play this a little bit closer to the vest. Let me have a little bit better of a perspective about what I'm doing. Because I tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, You have to put yourself in a position to where you see yourself further down the line. And a leader, a real leader, will always see himself or herself in the future. And we get caught up in the present and in the past because somebody told us at the time they didn't want to do it. It was negative. It was this. It was that. And we get caught in our feelings. You don't get caught in your feelings when you're looking for success. Because if you get caught in your feelings when you're looking for success, you'll never be successful. You have to have a mentality that says, I don't care what anybody else does, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to do it anyway. Why? Because if you work it, it will work. It's a process called time that'll build you into a position called consistency. And that particular tag of consistency allows you to do it whether you feel like it, whether you doesn't feel like it, whether it's good, whether it's bad, whether it's raining, whether it's cold, whether it's hot, it does not matter. You become all things to all people, including yourself. And I can guarantee you this, ladies and gentlemen, if you carry that baby full term, and your water breaks, your baby will come out. Your baby will be consistent. Your baby won't take no for an answer. Your baby will be all things to all people. And your baby will grow up to eventually become a senior vice president that has led thousands and thousands of people into what I like to call the promised land of the consistency of ACN. With that said, Mr. Lewis, I thank you, sir. I thank everybody on the call for their time. Turn the call back over to you. Wow, 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 guys. I hope you guys are really paying attention and, and thinking about your business and your life as Mr. Sam Foster was talking and how you can protect your term of pregnancy and go full term and have that baby. And I think that was an amazing message, sir. I thank you for your time. I thank you for your preparation on that message. And I think I'm basing it on the chat because it's blowing up right now.